In this next segment, let's talk about the small intestine as it relates to the stomach, the pancreas, the mesentery, the large intestine. We've identified the liver already and the gallbladder. So on the list, here are the words. We're just continuing on with the digestive system below the diaphragm. So we've already done the stomach. Let's move into the small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, ileum. We've looked at where the spleen is in relationship to the stomach. I'll show you again. And then we may or may not see the pancreas. I'll see what I can draw. The mesentery, the large intestine, and we've seen where the liver is, and the gallbladder, and the cystic duct. So let's look at that. Just to recap slightly. Again, we've got the esophagus. The liver is on the right of the human, the pig, the cat, the dog. So the liver is on the right. The stomach is on the left. Along with the liver is the gallbladder. And you'll see the uh, duct coming off of the gallbladder. That is the cystic duct. I'll make a bigger picture of that in just a minute. Underneath the stomach on the left is the pancreas. The stomach will uh, turn into the small intestines. And the small intestines are going to be in three parts. The duodenum, which is this first part off of the stomach. You can see it leaves the pyloric region uh, and goes through the pyloric sphincter. And then we turn into the duodenum. The second part is the jejunum. Jejunum. That is this part you can see here. And then the final part, we'll see that uh, enters into the large intestine or runs into the large intestine is the ileum. Is the ileum. So you can see the word ileum, the word jejunum, and there's the word duodenum. Okay. And then we'll look at the large intestine in the pig. In, in the large intestine in a human, again, we have the ascending transverse descending spiral and the rectum, uh, those are all the colon, and then the anal canal and the exit to the anus. So let's look at a little bit of that. Okay, where we were. Here again is the stomach. We have a, the heart sitting over the stomach. So we've got the esophagus going behind the heart, running down uh, through the diaphragm. The stomach emerges and turns into the cardiac region or portion of the stomach itself. We have a gate, which is a sphincter. That is the gastroesophageal sphincter. The top of the stomach is the fundus on the top left part of the stomach. The body of the stomach is the major portion here. As we leave the body of the stomach to go into the duodenum, we move through the pyloric region or the pyloric um, portion. And then the exit to the duodenum, the small intestine first part, is the pyloric sphincter, the pyloric sphincter. And I've written liver over here, but the liver would take up most of this area over the right side of the stomach. And just to rehash the spleen, the spleen is on the left side of the stomach. <clears throat> so now let's look at the large intestine and the small intestine. So let's look at the small intestine first. Again, we've got our diaphragm as our divider. The diaphragm is our dividing line. We remember that the esophagus ran behind the heart and then comes through the diaphragm, turns into the stomach, and then we have the esophagus, the gastroesophageal sphincter, the fundus, the body, this is the lesser curvature and this is the greater curvature in case you actually have that on your exam. But if it's not on your list for my class, then you don't have it on this test. Then you have the pyloric region and the cardiac region. 
cardiac region being this region here, the pyloric region being this region, and then you have the pyloric sphincter. And now let's move into the small intestine. So the first part of the small intestine, I'm going to call this small intestine. The first part of the small intestine is going to be the duodenum. The duodenum. And so let's list the parts of the small intestine. The duodenum. You may have heard it pronounced duodenum. Okay, the second part, which I'm not going to draw in depth, but the second part is called the jejunum. I'm going to spell just like it sounds. So, jejunum. That's the second part of the small intestine. The third part that bumps in to the large intestine is going to be the ileum. The ileum. And if you remember that ileum was a bone in your pelvis, so either of your hip bones, the uppermost portion of those bones uh, that make up the pelvic structure is the iliac bone and so you've got the iliac crest that you can put your hands on your hips and so if you think about the ilium it sits within it sits within the pelvic bowl if my hands are the pelvic bowl the ilium sits within it and that's why it's named that the ilium hits the blind end of the large intestine called the cecum And you'll see on your sheet it's spelled cecum. Either is fine. This is the appendix. Just for reference. The cecum on the pig continues into this thing called the spiral colon. Right? So this is the spiral and it does look very much like it's going in loops. And then the spiral colon ends and goes all the way down to the rectum as the descending colon. the rectum and then out the anus. And so let's list the parts of the large intestine. Cecum. Spiral colon. Descending colon. And rectum. Okay, and one more time with the human. You can get a look at it again and see that we've got the liver, gallbladder on the right, stomach on the left. Here we've got the duodenum. The duodenum is this first part coming off of the stomach. It's about 10 inches long in the human. That turns into the jejunum. You see the word here? Jejunum. We've got duodenum here, this first part, and then jejunum here. And then this little ilium is this part that runs into this large intestine. So this ilium is the last part of the small intestine and where it runs into the large intestine, there's another little gate there called the ileocecal valve. But for now, just know that the small intestine ends as the ilium 
and turns into the large intestine, which is the cecum. And notice the appendix is just kind of a marker to let you know where you are. So the cecum. In humans, the cecum begins the ascending and then the transverse and then the descending colon out to the sigmoid, which is this loop here, and then down the rectum. In the fetal pig, the cecum out there. Remember that cecum will move over to the spiral colon, loop-de-loop -loop around, and then that'll become the descending colon, just like it was in the human, and that'll go down to the rectum. 